and bring Elijah food and water because this was a time during a terrible drought. There was no water, there was no food, but God provided for Elijah because Elijah, uh, he was obedient to the word of the Lord. Even though he was a little fearful, even though he was in hiding, he was still being obedient to the Lord. So we find ourselves in this text, in this 17th chapter, God is telling Elijah again, Elijah, you've been in this cave too long. I need you to move and I need you to go somewhere else. You think it's safe in this cave, but I'm going to send you where you will be safe in the land of Zidion because of the fact that's where Jezebel was from. That was Jezebel's own land. God is telling Elijah, go to Jezebel's territory. Go to Jezebel's land. They're not going to look for you right there in her whole household. They're not going <laughs> to look for you in her city. So go right there. You can find safety right there. You have to realize that when you're obedient, obedience will always bring Rewards. Elijah got up and he arose and he was obedient to the word of the Lord. It says, and Elijah the Tishbite, uh, Patrick here in that 17th chapter, Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said to Ahab, as whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these three years, but according to that word and the word of the Lord came to him, and it wasn't any rain because there was a drought. But Elijah was being obedient to what thus said the Lord, even though his life could have been taken, he was still being obedient. And look what he did. He arose, God told him to arrive, get to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I, this is the Lord, I have commanded a widow, widow, widow woman, a widow woman, huh? a widow woman there to sustain thee. I've already provided for you when you get there, but you've got to be obedient enough to go where I tell you to go. And if you're obedient enough to go where I tell you to go, which it didn't make sense to Elijah, yeah. I'm the, because the, the, the prophets were always the one that was giving blessings. They was the, always the one that was giving out. And now God is telling him, this widow woman, the, one, the widow woman that had no husband, the, the widow woman that was in dire stress, she, she, she was perplexed at this widow woman. She had, had nobody to take care of her. Her husband had died. wasn't anyone there but her little boy there. So it was just the widow woman and her little boy. And this was during the time of a drought, Patrick. There, there was no water coming down out of heaven. There was no lakes around for them to run down and get some water to. There was no ponds around where well, they could run down to the pond. There, there was no rivers around where well, they could run down to the river. There was no water around. Go to Zarephath. I'm going to protect you there at Zarephath. I'm going to provide for you there at Zarephath. Why? Because I have promised that I would never leave you, Shirley, and I would never forsake you. So Elijah found himself going to Zarephath. He was being obedient unto the Lord. And it says, so he arose and went to Zarephath and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering sticks. And he called her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel. Remember, there was no water that I may drink. This is what Elijah is to live it. I have not a cake of bread in my household to give to you. All I have is some meal in my vet and some oil in my vet. That's all that I have, Elijah. And I was going out, Shirley, to gather some sticks and to make a fire because it's a, such a terrible drought. And it seems like everybody is leaving or everybody is dying. It's, it's such a terrible drought. But I'm just going to make my son and myself. I, I'm going to give us a little food before we die out of here. That's all that I have in the house is enough for this one day for me and my little boy and neither one of us have ate anything and you're telling me to go and make you some bread you're telling me to go and get you you some water and you know I don't have anything you can look at, at my condition and see I'm in a pitiful condition yet you want me to do something for you you want my last my last piece of bread you want my last drink of water you want me to give that to you and I, and I gotta forget about my son and give this to you and my son and I might die if I give this to you no Huh? Regardless of the suspense, I'm going to do what you tell me to do. And she went and she made some bread and so got some water and gave it to the man of God, Elijah. And it says because she was obedient, 
Remember, obedience brings blessings. God will protect you. God will provide for you because God has promised that. It says, and Elijah said unto her, fear not. Fear, don't, don't worry about it. What I tell you to do. And if you keep being obedient to my word, I, then evidently I'm going to bless you in ways beyond your comprehension. You may not understand how you're getting blessed, but I'm going to bless you beyond your composition. And he said, and, and the Lord said, shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. In verse 15, Patrick says, And she went and did, obedient, did according to the sayings of Elijah, and she and her house did eat many days, and the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake unto Elijah. That means that since she was obedient, Shirley, she was obedient, that the God made sure that she was protected, even though she was a widow, God made sure she was protected the same way he did Elijah. Even though Elijah was hiding, God made sure that he was protected because he was obedient. We have to realize that obedience will bring blessings. If obedience will bring rewards. If you're obedient, God will protect you. If you're obedient, God will provide for you. Why will he protect you? Why will he provide for you? Because of the fact that he had promised never to leave you, never to leave you alone. Because that widow was obedient and did what Elijah told her to do. Every time she went in the kitchen, every time she got hungry, her and her little boy, huh? she went in the kitchen and looked in the mirror bell and when she looked in that barrel, there was plenty flour to make her a cake of bread. There was plenty oil to bake the bread in. That lasted all of the way until the drought was over and Elijah had pronounced now there will be rain. But first he shut up the heavens for three years that there would be no rain. Now he's going to open up the heavens and when it began to rain again, then the meal would run out. But she had enough meal. She had enough oil to last her during the time of drought, during the time of famine, during the time of hunger, during the time of, of sickness, during the time of heartaches, during the time of pain. She had enough of everything to last her simply because of the fact that she was obedient to the word of the Lord. We have to learn from this lesson, from this widow, and from Elijah that if we continue to be obedient to the Lord, even though you don't understand, mm -hmm. being obedient, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes you, you get a little afraid, you get a little fearful. Some things that the Lord tell you to do. Huh? But, but, but don't worry. When the Lord tell, tell you to love, don't let hate take over. Be obedient and love those unlovable folk. When the Lord tell you to forgive, be obedient. Huh? And forgive them more than seven times. Whatever the Lord tell us to do, even though we don't understand it sometimes. Amen. We have to learn that we will have to be obedient to the word of the Lord. The Bible says this man named Jesus in the book of Philippians, he talked about him. He said Jesus was obedient. He humbled himself and became obedient even to the death of the cross. Wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name above every other name. Right now it's the name of Jesus. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is the Christ to the glory of God. I challenge you today, each one of us, I just challenge you to continue to just try to be obedient unto the word of the Lord. And if you are obedient, even in here, God's going to protect you. Yes. Even in here, Patrick, God's going to provide for you. Why? Simply because promise never to leave you. Never to leave you alone. Yes. That's why he went to the cross on our behalf. That we might have the right to the tree of life. Jesus just didn't simply hang there and die. We have to believe one day that he will come back again. So you have to live every day of your life in obedience to Christ. Because the Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. 
You can give up all you want to give up. Huh? But obedience will all be always be better than sacrifice. You can sacrifice and pay all the tithes in the world and still not be obedient to the Lord. Huh? God don't want you to sacrifice if you're not obedient enough to do what he tells you to do. Amen. Yeah. That's the time of prayer. Eternal God, we do come once again in the precious name of Jesus. Lord, we come in the most honest time that we even know how. Just saying thank you for your grace, your mercy, for your love. Lord, we ask you to be kind enough to forgive our sins. Continue, Lord, to look beyond our faults. And Master, please see all of our needs. Now, Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for your word, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for the voice of being obedient. Because sometimes, Lord, it's hard for us to be obedient when we don't understand. Master, we pray, Lord God, that you would continue, Lord, to help us to have the faith to be obedient to your word, even when we don't understand, even when we can't see our way, even when we can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. We pray, Lord God, for obedience on today. Now, Lord, I pray, Lord God, for Brother Patrick in a very special way, Brother Rice sitting in a wheelchair. Lord, you know them. You've been knowing them a long time. So, Master, I pray that you will continue to lift him up in a very special way in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for Sister Sherry. I pray that you will bless this food that we are about to receive. Let it be for the nourishing of our bodies. In Jesus' name, we do pray and thank God for Sherry being obedient. Lord God, because obedience will bring blessings. Even though sometimes she volunteer, sometimes she don't get paid, but Lord, at least she is obedient to your word in taking care of your people and doing things the way that you would have them to do. So Master, I pray right now that you would show her the blessings or show her some of the rewards that you are going to give her simply because of the fact that she was obedient to your word. Lord, when it's all over and said and done, we'll be so very careful to give you the praise, the honor, and all of the glory. In Jesus' name, we do pray, and for his sake, and we all do say, thank God, thank amen, amen, and amen. 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 A language in this, to read 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, 1 Thessalonians, and 2 Thessalonians. Calling the epistles. Those are Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The first Corinthians is basically, Paul is basically talking about how people should be acting because they were having so much chaos and schism in the church. So Paul was kind of, kind of rectify them and tell them how they need to live. And he's telling in, in Thessalonians, he said, because one of these days you, you, the Lord's going to come back again. So you need to make sure that you're living right when the Lord comes back and when the Lord returns. He says, for I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them who are asleep, huh? For the Lord himself shall descend, and you shall hear the shout of an archangel, and the trumpet shall blow, and the dead in Christ shall be raised incorruptible, and we who are alive shall be called up to meet him in an air. For the corruptible must put on incorruption, the mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible put on incorruption, this mortal put on immortality, then the saying shall be brought to pass that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is that victory? The sting of death is sin. The strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who have given us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Finally, therefore, brethren, Paul says, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain, in the law. That's what he was talking about in Corinthians. That's what he was talking about in, 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 in Thessalonians. That's why the Lord led you to those scriptures so they would be an eye opener to you and you were obedient enough to go and read those scriptures that the Holy Spirit led you to. Now you can receive a blessing because you was obedient to the word of God. 